Dr. Shanks, welcome and, and good to see you. And um, uh, we want to get a chance for uh, people who, uh, you know, clicked on to our website to get a chance to know you um, as, as we do um, and, and learn a little bit about your, your work. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start by just kind of asking you, you've done all this amazing education and, and obviously you focused on science. At some point in, the, in your academic career, you decided science was going to be important to you. Tell us about that. Tell us what got you interested in science and studying science, maybe specifically related to the eye. Okay, well, I, uh, I guess this is not unusual, but ever since I was a kid, I really liked um, science. I wrote, you know, when I, I lived in Boston when I was real small and uh, we had a very small garden and I was always picking up the bricks and seeing what was, you know, what was crawling under there and, you know, the little mealy bugs and worms and stuff. Luckily, we didn't have any poisonous spiders there and, uh, or I, I probably would have found them. But uh, yeah, yeah, so I really liked it. And then when we moved to rural Western New York, um, we had a, a, a large 55 acre property uh, with a creek running through it or a creek as they say there and uh, they had all this uh, it was a, a the base of an ancient Devonian sea so all those all the stones were sandstone and if you broke them open they were just full of fossils so you know I mean oh, wow. I just love that discovery and cracking open and what will you find and you know science is a lot like that you don't necessarily know what you're going to get until you crack it open and see, see what's there and uh, so I was drawn to biology and did pretty well in school there. So I went to Alfred and then I went to Alfred University as well. And uh, I had a professor at Alfred University who was a very good microbiologist and he taught me sterile technique and I still use those techniques today. But one of the things he did as a side gig was he worked with the Cornell Extension on uh, sparkling wines and on helping them develop sparkling wines. And I, I was like, wow, that's really neat that you can use this biologist, basic microbiology for a very practical application. Oh, wow. And so since then, I really got into the, the applied side, you know, and, and, and medicine is great for that because there's the translational aspect. Like you can, you know, you can do the applied side in making beer and wine. And actually, I am a home brewer, so I, I take <laughs> advantage of microbiology skills there and make beer. But I am also very interested in helping patients and, and being able to do things like that um, through biology are great. And um, I'll just continue a little bit. And then when I went to graduate school, I, it was a really great molecular biology school. And they were great with like genetic engineering. And so genetic engineering, you just take a gene and clone it and make a lot of a, a protein that could be really important or therapeutic. I um, mean, ex example is insulin. Like they used to have to slaughter millions of animals and take their organs and isolate the insulin. But now after they've cloned the insulin gene, they can just grow it in test tubes and you can make oh, wow. infinite amounts without mm -hmm. killing all these animals and, uh, you know, that, that process. So anyways, there are all these applied aspects to, to it that I really like. Oh, that's actually fascinating. Um, and, you know, thank you. That was, that was a very, very good answer to that question. So um, your research is very, I find it very interesting and, and, it, and some may say different, you know, in terms of, you know, the uh, applied approach. Tell us a little bit about it. I, and I know that you do, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a broad based platform of things that you do but just give us the, the, the highlights of what your research is focused on. Okay, well, as you suggested, I probably have too many projects going on, but I'll, I'll just <laughs> tell you about, I'll tell you about two or three-ish. So uh, one of the ones we're doing on, uh, I'm working on, which is very eye focused, is I'm working with a former professor named Jess Clarland. And Jess is a really, he's this mad Scandinavian who, uh, who retired early, but he had these fantastic ideas, but he couldn't do them, but they're perfect for the stuff, the techniques that we do in my lab. And, uh, um, and essentially the idea is there's a, a massive class of drugs called biologics, and they have really revolutionized medicine. And they can specifically target individual disease pathways. Uh, unlike, you know, a lot of drugs are just, they just found to have some effect. Biologics are usually, developed um, in, with an intellectual and rational approach. Not always, but generally. And so they can be very useful and they often have lower side effects and things like that. 
So, um, but they can't be used on the surface of the eye because there's tears and the tears are fantastic at washing away things and it makes drug delivery to the eye very difficult. Mm -hmm. So he came up with a theoretical way to deliver these biologics to the ocular surface. So we work together and we figure out a way to do it. And now we're doing it and we're working with animals now, but we can treat dry eye in mice. And dry eye is an affliction that especially affects um, the elderly, but in, in women. And it's, it doesn't sound like much, but it can really change people's lives, especially if it was a severe kind or if you have Sjogren's syndrome and things like that. Oh, yeah. Um, and we think we can apply this as a platform for a number of other um, sources, a number of other problems, or to use to help improve um, transplants, uh, ocular corneal transplants, and we think it could be important after um, corneal surgeries, such, such as LASIK, to, uh, to improve the outcomes and reduce yeah. scarring and things like that. So we think it has a lot of possibilities. And I really like that because it allows us to do some genetic engineering in terms of like protein chemistry and, uh, um, you know, and also there's a clear pathway to helping people. And we've actually taken it a little bit further and we've started a company. Uh, but we, oh, great. Yeah, but we still want to um, bring it to not just the front of the eye. We're very interested in helping people with macular degeneration. And one of our ideas is we can use this delivery system to reduce the number of injections people get for macular degeneration. So oh. instead of every month, maybe every six months. Um, so that's kind of uh, one of our down the road pathways and something we really want to work uh, on and develop. But we, you know, that's, that's in the future. So, you know, Are there are there biologics used for macular degeneration or planned to be used for macular degeneration? Oh, there are. There are plenty that, so you can use biologics inside the eye. You just oh. can't use them on the ocular surface. So like the major players, um, the major treatments of macular degeneration are biologics. Okay. Okay. That's, that's it. That makes it very interesting. So you'd be able to use those anchors possibly to, uh, again, reduce the amount of times that you'd need to um, to you know, come in for those injections to get those shots. That, that would be fantastic. I'm sure a lot of the patients who go through that would really appreciate that. Yeah, and I mean, nobody wants to be injected in the eye. And, and there are, are, frankly, risks associated with it, uh, especially infection. And I guess that brings me to my second major topic, which is uh, the infection. So, um, and I'll talk about how I got interested in Pittsburgh and that has to do with these infections of the eye as well. But I'm really lucky to work with a group here called the Campbell Lab. Mm -hmm. And the Campbell Lab have this incredible repository of microbes that allow us to work with um, real clinical isolates from patients. And it's a unique resource that can't be found at other universities. And that's one of the main things that drew me here actually. And uh, um, uh, yeah, so I'm very interested in how microbes cause infections of the eye. And that's you know, important for people who are contact lenses. That's one tenth of the population wear contact lenses, and it's a huge risk factor for right. infections. And, you know, those injections into the eye are a risk factor, or any corneal surgery or any surgery in the eye is a risk for infection. So going for, you know, any in, in kind of transplantation and things of these nature. So going forward in the future with new technologies, or we're going to always have to care about infections. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're interested in how bacteria cause infection, how they become resistant to antibiotics and, you know, things of, things of that nature and, and with the hope of developing techniques to prevent vision loss due to infection. Wow. It, well, you know, again, th th there's so many, uh, you know, just the sky's the limit in terms of the application for that. Uh, and so, so you, um, uh, you've already accomplished quite a bit in terms of science and, 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 and in medicine. And I, I'm sure that it may be difficult for you to answer this, but what would you say you're at this point most proud of that you've done today that, that uh, you would say that you really feel that this is it, we've made a contribution professionally? Okay, well, I guess there are a couple of things. Uh, one is as a postdoc, I uh, developed a genetic engineering system that's used by um, labs around the world. So wow. people at MIT and uh, Dart Dartmouth and NYU and Netherlands and so forth use this technique and uh, um, it's, it's been very helpful. Our, our lab uses it. Um, so that's nice. Uh, but another thing are just um, some of the projects that I've had since I've been here and some of the 
papers that we've had. And I guess it's a little bit sentimental because I think of the times when that group of trainees were together, we were working on those projects. And, mm-hmm. and oftentimes in science, uh, things come in, in gushers. You know, it doesn't, it's not just, uh, it's not just smooth sailing throughout. Sometimes you have these magical times where you learn so much and you know test hypotheses, you either disprove them or even even if you love it, you have to you know cut a hypothesis that uh, turns out to be untrue, or you or you prove them to be true, and then you you know you publish these, and then oftentimes I think back to those papers, I see the names on them, and I think about those those trainees, and and many of them have gone on to become physicians, and uh, actually more physicians than graduate school some wow. have gone on to go to graduate school and and it's a little bit sentimental but I, i'm definitely proud of, of those uh those things yeah well I, th- I like that answer because certainly it's what we're here to do as well to you know train uh you know scientists of the future as well as the clinicians and and i know a lot of the clinicians get a lot of benefits from the campbell lab as you mentioned and and learning from there and learning from the the uh you know the the vast resources that are there so so getting to that, because you mentioned that, that was one of the things that attracted you to Pittsburgh. So when you came to Pittsburgh, um, what were the things that were you know, on your list that said, this is, this is the right fit for me? Well, just to take a step back, I, I wasn't sure where I was going to go. Uh, I wasn't necessarily sure I was going to go into ophthalmology, but I was in a lab at Dartmouth, a really great lab run by a, a, a doctor named uh, George O'Toole. And we happen to have uh, uh, a corneal surgeon working in the laboratory at that time who had just won a prestigious K08 award from the NIH and he was studying bacterial biofilms that affect the eye. And I would always turn around because we shared a space and he would have his computer and it have like an infected eye picture which are just terrible to behold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it would, you know, gross me out. But, but uh, so I, this, his name was Mike Ziegens and uh, um, he got me interested in ophthalmology. And then when I was looking at the positions that were open, I mentioned that the Campbell Lab had a position open, you know, at the Department of Ophthalmology, and he was really impressed with them as one of the world leaders in ocular mm-hmm. microbiology. And he, you know, really got me interested. And then when I visited here, I was really impressed just by the breadth of knowledge, and and I really enjoyed everybody too. It was, it was kind of like a family in the departments. And uh, yeah. I like the feel of the department. I was impressed by Pittsburgh. Having never been to Pittsburgh, I didn't realize how great it was. So, uh, <laughs> so that was a nice surprise. And we kind of live somewhat regionally, so we'd be close to family and things like that are also nice. Well, that is good. Well, it, we're glad that it was a fit for you because you know, you're, you're someone who's doing great things. What are some things that you would say in the future you hope that you can accomplish or that you see that you know, where, where things are, are you know, um, uh, developing with the department and and some of the, the things in the horizon that get you excited. Well, I mean, the department is going great guns now. I mean, we've got all these new faculty with all these fresh ideas, and uh, I'm working with you know Tony St. Ledger, for example, and and we have a great collaboration going on, and uh, uh, I'm excited about all the new people and the energy that brings in it, and the new building that uh, we hope to have soon. Yeah. And, uh, it should be really facilitate things. And, and also just the fact that in ophthalmology, there's still a lot to learn. I mean, you know, we want to have whole eye transplants. I mean, we're getting into the brain now and visual cognition. And these things are, you know, of course, very interesting and, and, and exciting. And hopefully I can be part of those things in terms of either whether it's looking out for infections of implants that they use, you know, to help people that to see, uh, you know, anything of that nature. And uh, I'm also excited about uh, the anchoring, you know, so Mm -hmm. I would really like to be able to help people with macular degeneration get fewer injections. Uh, So there are a lot, there there are lots of things that we're, you know, I look forward to uh, participating in. That'd be fantastic. And, and, you know, um, it's always wonderful, Rob, and thank you for, for, uh, sitting for the interview today and uh, good to see you take care of yourself and um and uh, thanks for for uh have a great rest of the day thank you very much it's good to see you too